Now what you'll find is that each question tends to start off fairly straightforward, so maybe just kind of looking at a graph, stating something or defining something, and then each question gets harder and harder and harder. So first of all, um, you've just got a velocity time graph. The, basically, the first one says, um, how can you use the term the acceleration? Well, the acceleration is just equal to the gradient of the line. And what happens to that? How do you describe it? Well, basically, uh, as the gradient decreases, that means the acceleration of this object decreases as well. The next question is very much a practical thing, you know, how would you actually carry out the experiment? So this experiment here, how could you find out its kinetic energy? You need to know two things. First of all, you need to know its mass and you also need to know its velocity. So I've said that I'm going to use uh, a light gate. Now what you have is basically you have a card that you can put on top of the car. So this is called an interrupt card. And this is going to um, basically interrupt the signal from a light gate. So I basically said that light gate light gate is used to record that the time uh, that the car passes in front of it for one mark. I then had said how if you know the time and you know this distance here x of uh, this piece of card here then you know that the velocity is equal to the length of the card divided by the time that it cuts out the beam for and that lets you work out the velocity. And finally uh, you know you measure the mass using a mass balance and then you can work out the kinetic energy from a half times mass times velocity squared. So I've got details of how you work out the kinetic energy, the fact that you need to know the mass, how you calculate the velocity from the time that a light gate records. So that's my answer for question B. When it comes to C, um, this one here, uh, first of all, um, why is it not linear? Well, basically not all of the energy is converted from this potential energy that it initially has into kinetic energy at the end. And I've given a reason for that, which is due to the friction, uh, which will then effectively cause a heating effect. So we're losing energy by friction. So not all of the potential energy ends up as kinetic. Then we want to look at the average resistive force acting on the car. Well, we know that work done equals force times distance moved in the direction of the force. Uh, X is equal to 90 centimetres, so 0 0.9 metres, which is what I read off the graph just up here. Um, that means the energy losses uh, must be equal to the work done against resistive forces. So effectively, at the start, it had uh, 0.50 joules, and at the end, it had 0.36 of a joule. So it lost in total 0.14 of a joule. So we know that the force is equal to the work done divided by the distance, so 0 0.14 over 0.9 to give a value of 0 0.1555. And again, I've given that to two significant figures as my final answer. So this one here, lots of bits of physics involved, and this just comes from doing more and more practice of many questions. And uh, that's it for question 22, and my next video is all about question 23.